Now, dozens of South Sudan nationals have been forced to flee their homes and seek refuge in neighboring countries. Uganda is currently playing host to over 200,000 refugees who sought refugee refuge there following the conflict that erupted in December 2013 and recently when President Salava Kira sacked his deputy, Riek Machar. Gordon Odiambo has more on the details. The recent fighting in South Sudan capital Juba has seen more than 26,000 people flee to its southern neighbor Uganda. According to the United Nations refugee UNHCR, at least 10,000 refugees are sheltering at a camp near the border town of Elegu, which was designed to hold only 1,000 people. Yay! UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon has urged the Security Council to fortify its peacekeeping mission there. He wants an arms embargo and sanction imposed on leaders and commanders, blocking the implementation of the August peace deal. Mashar was reappointed vice president early this year, but left Juba as soon as fighting broke out in Juba and vowed to only return after deployment of foreign troops as a buffer force to separate his troops from Kiev's. Gurun Odiambo, KE24 Newscat. Thank you for that report. Now, following the clashes that began in 2013, over 40,000 civilians have been displaced from South Sudan. Riek Machar was reappointed as vice president, but has fled at Juba. And now we are joined by two guests to expound on the recent crisis that has been termed as a violation of the peace deal of 2015. Thank you very much both for joining me. I'm joined by official ambassador to South Sudan, Jimmy Makwach. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm also joined by representative of FSPLAIO. I'm joined by Lam Jok. Thank you so much both for joining me. Now, let's discuss the recent clashes. I might begin with you. It has been termed by the UN as a direct violation of the peace deal of 2015 August. Do you think that is the case? Absolutely not. It's not a violation because within the, within the compromise peace agreement, there is a provision which says in the event that the position of the vice, first vice president falls vacant, the I.O. themselves can nominate somebody and be appointed by the president. And that is a process that took place. And uh, General Taban was nominated by the I.O. And our president appointed him. So it is within the CPA, I mean, uh, the compromise peace agreement. Uh, that anybody else can be appointed should uh, the position fall vacant. Well, do you think that was a too quick of a reappointment just after Machar left and there has been uh, discrepancies over who appointed Taban? Is it the opposition who recommended him or was it the government? What are your thoughts as a representative <coughs> of SPLA IO? Well, uh, thank you so much, uh, Lavinia, for getting me to your studio. Uh, the matter of appointing the first vice president is a national of interest, not that of only I.O. However, the peace agreement is stipulated in Chapter 1, Article 6.5 and 6.4. Uh, there are two articles to that. One, in 6.5, it says that in the case of absence of the first vice president, then he appoints or he nominates someone to take, out, to take care of his responsibilities until he returns. Uh, the second article, 6.4, talks about uh, permanent, permanent replacement of the vice president, where it says in case the office of the, in case the, office of the first vice president fall vacant through mental affirmity or, let's say, death, then the SPLM, SPLI, or SITS uh, nominates someone, and then that process is taken, is given to the president for the president to, to call. However, with, uh, with the case of General Taban, that has not been the case. First and foremost, we went to Juba to implement a peace agreement. Uh, the issue that took place on Friday, the shootout that took place on Friday, was an attempt to kill the first vice president, Dr. Machar. Uh, the, the subsequent attacks on Monday, on Sunday and Monday, the 10th and the 11th, were also the same attempt. So you can see the trend where Dr. Machar is driven out by force in Juba, and then a replacement takes place. We in the SPLMIO believe that Taban Dengai has defected to the SPLMIG, which is inside of President Kiir. The entire leadership of the SPLMIO is still the first vice president of Tumachar. Uh, the way we see what has taken place in Juba, we are seeing that as a defection of General Taban to President Kiir. 
Right. So would you say uh, that Riek Machar's life is in danger? Uh, the other following question would be, part of that peace deal was that for the opposition to have troops. Do you think there was an error in uh, advocating for that within the peace deal because we're having clashes now in the country? No. The, first and foremost, the peace agreement is a compromised peace agreement. Uh, when our chairman signed it, now the first vice president, when he signed it on August 17th in Addis Ababa, it was with the understanding that it is a compromised peace agreement. We could not get everything that we needed, but we were comfortable with what we signed. Uh, we expected the same with the President Kiir when he signed on August 26th, so that the peace agreement is implemented as it was signed. When we went to Juba in April, the first Vice President's, the SPLAIO forces were supposed to be 2,910. Those include the guards that should guard Dr. Machar, those include the police, the 1,500 police, to, to help the security in Juba. That includes a few number of national security and a few number of army, of army personnel to protect the national or critical infrastructure in Juba. Uh, as we went to Juba, and as Dr. Machar went to Juba, that has not been the case. Uh, we managed to receive, to transport only 1,370. So the whole package was never done. And there has been delay on the side of the IG so that the actual the force of I.O. doesn't all reach in Juba. Right. And these, you, all of us could see what has happened now. Maybe this has been in the work of... Thank you. Ambassador, uh, the U.N. has condemned the recent crisis in South Sudan and their, their Ban Ki-moon is imposing to put uh, sanctions, uh, arms embargo and sanctions against the leaders and commanders. What is your opinion on that? First of all, let me reaffirm that the government is committed to fully implement the peace agreement. With that being said, the latest changes within the I.O. are entirely, entirely the business of I.O. That is an internal division that the government has no control of. As I said, provision 6.4 says clearly that in the absence of the first vice president, the I.O. can nominate. He talks of uh, the article uh, 6.5. It's true. It's temporary. But when Dr. Machar freed Juba, how temporarily was that? It was given for the eight hours to report back to, uh, to the city in order to continue with the peace agreement. And that is what the, what, what the, the agreement says. It's given a certain time to meet the deadline. He failed to do so, the I.O. was given an opportunity. Now, it is not within the agreement who should sit within the I.O. and what number to determine the replace of, of, of Machar. It just say an I.O. And the people who sat in Juba to nominate Taban included the former deputy to Dr. Machar, who is uh, General Alfred uh, Gore. So it will begin, I mean, it beats our, uh, our understanding as a government when the I.O., some of the elements within the I.O. are disputing the appointment of Taban when it is uh, all local, uh, I mean, internal issues. So you would dispute the UN's uh, imposed yeah, sanctions yeah, the UN, on the, the UN country? should not uh, pose any sanction because as a government we are ready to implement the peace agreement uh, with Dr. T I mean, uh, General Taban as the first vice president. Uh, unfortunately, if the former vice president wants to come back, Dr. Riyak Machar, he comes back into a country as a civilian and normal person. Right. And as we know, currently, this is a serious uh, crisis within the, within the country. Uh, recently, the South Sudanese minister who represented neutrality within the government, Lama Kol, resigned and openly said that there is no more peace agreement uh, to be implemented in Juba. What are your thoughts? Is this a serious crisis that we should take uh, heed of? Well, uh, and where will the government be heading without a central figure for neutrality within the board? Well, Lavina, before I answer the uh, question of uh, Dr. Lamako's resignation from Tigonu, let me make a reference to what my uh, brother has just mentioned. The replacement of the first vice president is indeed part business uh, I.O. and part business national. And this is why it was included in the, uh, in the compromise peace agreement. First and foremost, the SPLM SPLA I.O. has 20, 25 leaders that are mandated by our four documents. We have the Constitution, the national, uh, we have the Constitution, we have the, the manifesto, we have the Code of Conduct, and the internal regulations. All these documents are there. So when, when, in case that happens, we have a process that we go through. All right. Uh, what took place in Juba on the replacement of Dr. Machar is basically illegal because the people that, that have sat with General Taban are four plus himself five. And you have the other 20, which is simply the majority. 
that that were supposed to make the decision. Uh, so simply, the reason why we, we continue saying that is illegal is because they don't meet the quorum as indicated in our, in our laws and regulations as a movement. Now, in the case of uh, Dr. Lamarckle, of course it's a serious blow to the peace agreement. Uh, the moment the bullet was fired on July the 8th at the State House, the peace immediately has been compromised. Uh, you don't drive out or you don't, you don't intend to kill your peace partner and then you, you, you say that, oh, you have 20, 48 hours to report. That, that is, you just don't do that. Uh, now, maybe you have received the letter that came out from the Chief of Staff, Paul Malone, who have a series of orders from President Keir to either kill Dr. Machau or bring him or capture him alive. So when the, when, when the eruption happens on Friday, on the 8th, on Sunday, Dr. Riek, uh, on Sunday, Dr. Riek was, was, was attacked simultaneously at his two sites, at, at, at his residence and also at the side of his army. And on, Sunday, on Monday evening, when President Keir declared the ceasefire, Dr. Riek moved back from his old position and said, you know what, let me, let me pull my troops back so that there are no clashes between my troops and the troops of Salva Kiir. As, the, as he just implemented, the, uh, as President Kiir declared the ceasefire and, and subsequently Dr. Rick declared the ceasefire afterwards, on Tuesday evening, on Wednesday evening, they followed him in the bush. And they've been bombarding him with uh, helicopter gunships. They've been sending re reinforcement after reinforcement to capture or kill Dr. Machar. So are you saying these ongoing uh, threats against the life of uh, Riek Machar, will, will it escalate the crisis and the clashes uh, in the country? And uh, would you say who funds uh, the opposition, the, the army, who funds them? Do you, is there a foreign hand at play? No. Uh, SPLM, SPLAIO is not funded by any particular country or any particular entity. Uh, when we went to Juba, we went with, a, with 1,370 soldiers with a number of arms, all registered, all cleared by JMEC, which is the body that uh, is a commission that, that safeguards the agreement in South Sudan. As we continue fighting, the ammunition that the, our people have continued to defend themselves up to now is the ammunition that they receive from the government itself. We can never, in the situation they're in, they can never get any, anything from anyone. So to say that another country or another entity is filling the war by arming the opposition is untrue. We are Thank you. Thank, thank you for that. I'll cut you short. Now back to you, Ambassador. Uh, there is concern uh, with, with the representatives of, of the country. Many of them don't actually live within South Sudan. They, they can flee. They have the luxury, let's say, to flee from the country when there is tension and crisis. But you are having many civilians who are suffering firsthand. We're having civilians who have fled to Uganda. Uh, over 40,000 civilians have been affected, mothers, children. Uh, what are your thoughts? First of all, before I answer that question, let me say very clearly that there has been no letter from the general headquarters authorizing Malone to either kill or capture uh, Dr. Machar alive. This letter has been generated. Where did it come from then? Okay, this letter has been generated and circled within the social media just to create an impression that somebody is trying to kill Dr. Machar. Are you saying no one if, is if, attempting if to? If the government wanted to kill Dr. Machar, they would have not saved him that night or Friday. Saturday morning, the president himself is the one that guided Machar, uh, gave him the car, took him to his residence. If the government wanted to kill Machar, he would have not walked out of the state house after his forces, the storm. The state house while the president and Dr. Machar and Vice Vice President Wani were having a meeting. There is no way that a president will call his deputy and come and try and kill him. Who are but making the was, attempts against yeah. the threats of, on his life then? Dr. Machar is not being threatened by the government. It is his forces that started the war on the 7th and on Friday, which was the 8th, they stormed the state house where Dr. Machar was there with the president. president his very own forces Machar. are threatening him, according to yourself. What? His, his very own, you said his forces threatening yeah, yes. him. His forces are the main threat to him because they stage a war within the state house. How do you expect to fight it within the state house and get out with it? Mm -hmm. you know? But so he was Machar, saying it's the president. But Machar has been flushed out of Juba with his forces. He's on a run. We want to bring in security and peace for our people. We are very much concerned about our refugees who are fleeing to Uganda. We have appealed to the Ugandan government to help our refugees resettle them while we try to rescue the situation on the ground. 
Finally, is SPLAIO uh, open to dialogue with the government to quell this uh, unrest? Well, <coughs> foremost, uh, Lavinia, we went to Djibouti to implement an agreement. Uh, it has taken us two and a half years to get this agreement where the entire region, IGAT, has worked on that. The Troika worked so hard to bring that agreement. We have... In very few words, in, please. In very few words. Uh -huh. We are ready to implement an agreement. We are ready to implement agreements as it was signed by the first Vice President and as it was signed by President Kier. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much, Wait, for have, joining us here on the studio. Thank you. Well, you have uh, been watching K24 Newscut with me, Lavinia Garanja, our intensive interview on the South Sudanese clashes. Uh, do join us again at the same time, same place for more, and have a great afternoon.